Sometimes the best options are not always the ones we choose. Greetings, I'm Jeff, and I'll be reading for Maury today. Often, we have the desire to take a more difficult or wrong road, although we know that it will not be a good choice. This is the case of 35-year-old Nobukazu Kuriki, a famous Japanese climber who posted his adventures on social media. These are the images and videos that Kariki posted to his ever-updated Facebook page, in which he explained his projects. The departure to Nepal, the last in his life, and the trekking to the Everest Base Camp. On May 21, 2018, Kariki suddenly stopped posting content on Facebook, and shortly after, his team reports that there were problems. For climbers and fans, the death of Japanese alpinist and motivational speaker Nobukazu Kuriki was utterly devastating. Those who knew him or simply knew his story marveled at his determination. This was a man who, despite losing nine fingers to frostbite on a previous attempt, remained undeterred in his quest to reach Everest summit. When he tried again in May 2018, he came tantalizingly close to achieving his goal. With only 1,500 meters left to go before he reached the Everest summit, Kariki was suddenly struck by fever and a debilitating cough. However, his courage compelled him to not only forge ahead, but to update his social media accounts to tell the world that nothing would stop him. What did Kariki really intend on Everest? This question has been bothering people ever since the 35-year-old Japanese climber was found dead on 21st of May at an altitude of about 6,600 meters. Kariki had made a secret of his exact plan in the weeks before. He wanted to climb through the Southwest Fall, his team said after Kariki's death. Since the first ascent by the British Douglas Scott and Dougal Haston, in fall of 1975, only about 30 climbers have successfully climbed the southwest face, and only one without bottled oxygen. Joseph Just was the only climber of a four-man Slovak team to reach the summit in fall 1988. During the descent, he and his three other teammates died. There had never been a serious solo attempt on the steep and dangerous southwest face before Kariki's entry into the wall. Did such a climb make sense to Kariki? Against this background alone, Kariki's chances of success had to be rated as extremely low, even if he had been in top form. However, the Japanese mountaineer was not. After arriving at base camp, he suffered from severe cough and fever. Two days before he died, Kariki said he still had a slight cough, adding that it was almost gone. Kariki entered the wall and pitched up his tent at 7,300 meters. There, he assured by radio that he would be careful. He must have gotten worse at night. The next morning, his team informed that Kariki was therefore descending. After that, there were no signs of life from him. Members of the camera crew, who were there to film his ascent from the slopes of Nupse, searched for him and finally found him. He had slipped from a few hundred meters just below Camp 3. Did Kariki really believe that he could master the southwest face? The Japanese climber Ken Noguchi said that he doesn't think so. It seems to me that at some point his goal was no longer about stepping foot on the summit, but exposing himself to the toughest conditions imaginable and sharing that with people on social media. Also, on his seven attempts of Mount Everest, six of them ended in fall. Kariki often seemed to overestimate his abilities. In 2012, he suffered severe frostbite during an attempt via the West Ridge. Nine of his ten fingers had to be amputated. Nevertheless, he returned to Everest. Noguchi went on. He would have had a good chance of ascent without oxygen if he had only taken the southeast ridge. But that would have meant not doing it solo. Obviously, Kariki was also under pressure. 
A Japanese friend said that the local media had lost interest in the climber over time because he had always made big plans that realistically did not promise success. Maybe Kariki finally over tightened the screw, which often ends deadly on the highest mountains on earth. However, Kariki's death was not seen as stupidity for many of his fans, rather as something to believe in until the end. I have respect for you because you continue to push yourself forward until the very end. Thank you so much for your inspiration and courage to see many posts dedicated to Nobukazu Kariki. Thanks to Mori for allowing me to read on one of his great videos. 